Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm so glad. (laughs) Glad to be here, first of all, right? Because we all know any day above ground is a good one. And we all made it through New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, and it's now 2021. So I'm thrilled we're gathering together in this new year. And I have some things I want to share with you today that I'm very excited to have you learn because they're concepts that have really changed my life. So please stick around. We're going to be talking about how to live this new year in the light, with light, and lightened up. So again, welcome to Change It Up Radio. I am your host, Paula Shaw. I am an author, the author of Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say, the author of Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End, and also the author of Chakras, The Magnificent Seven. And all of those books are available on Amazon. Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End?, and Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say are particularly important books because they really help you if you're going through any kind of a loss issue, and they help you if you know someone who's going through a loss issue, who maybe needs someone to say something more valuable than, you'll get through this. People do. Or, Time Heals All Wounds, or some other totally irrelevant piece of information that we say in in the effort to help, but none of those pieces of information really do help. So please check those books out. And also, if you'd like to learn more about my work as a life transition coach, helping people who are dealing with change, or as a speaker, or an author, you can get that information on paulashaw.com. That's paulashaw.com. Also, while you're there, oh, I almost forgot to tell you, grab my free gift. I have a kind of a really fabulous cheat sheet called 20 Things to Say and Not to Say to People in Emotional Pain. And I mean, it's the actual sentences, things that can be really helpful because they come from the heart and they address the heart, and things that are not helpful, usually because they're intellectual. And even if they're true, they're not helpful when someone is in an emotional condition. So please check that out. And also, if you're interested in arranging a complimentary 20-minute consult with me, you can sign up for that on paulashaw.com as well. So I would love to, to have that opportunity to talk with you and see if we might be a good fit for doing some work together to help you through some kind of a change or transition that might be going on in your life. Also, if you want to learn more about Change It Up Radio, if you want to hear past shows, or if you want to learn about being a guest or a sponsor on this show, please go to changeituprradio.com. That's changeituprradio.com. All right. So let's talk about what we're here to discuss today, because I think it's it's a really important area that And looking at this area is a great way to start off a new gear. It's a great way to set set your sights on creating things differently than you ever have before. And I have to tell you, I do not preach from the mountain when it comes to this stuff. I'm 71 years down the road here, and I'm just getting it. 
about some of these principles that I'm going to talk to you about today. So I guess the the moral of that story is don't give up <laughs> and always be open to learning because you never know at what point in life you're going to learn something that's going to change everything. And what I'm going to share with you today are some ideas that really did change everything for me. So you know how last season in the fall, our theme was resilience. And every interview I did, every show I did, somehow tied in with that concept, with that idea of resilience. Well, this season, this winter season, I want to talk about light. Being open to the light, listening to the light, enlightening yourself, and lightening up. So light will be our theme. And one of the things that I, I want to address when it comes to light today is something I've learned. Really, I still have mastered it, to be totally honest, but, but I'm really getting better at getting it. Um, and I think a lot of you may be in the same boat. So you know how we've all heard people say, go with the flow, grace and ease, you know, just to follow your bliss. How about that one? Remember that one? Follow your bliss. Well, all of those are great ideas. But then there's that point at which we go, yeah, but how? What does that exactly mean? Is that just more catchphrases? You know, how does one actually do that? And so one of the, the keys I have learned recently is tune in, no matter what you're doing, whether it's your work, whether it's a date, whether it's um, uh, a task in front of you, whether it's a visit with family or friends, tune in and ask yourself, does this light me up? How am I feeling? Not how do I think I'm feeling? How am I feeling in my heart and my gut right now? Is this joyful for me? Does this make me feel more alive? Does this expand my being? If the answers to those questions are yes, 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 then what you're doing is right on the money. It's feeding your soul. It's building your energy. It's expanding your brain and your heart and your mind. And then I would say, keep doing more of that. But so often we we don't step into our bliss. We don't step into what lights us up because we think we can't have it. We think it's not practical. We think it won't pay the bills or we can't figure out the how. We may know the what. We may know what we want to do. We may know even, we may even be aware of what lights us up. But so often we get stopped by the how because we start worrying about what will, how will I actually do that? How will I make that make, how will I monetize it? That's the big catchphrase now, right? How will I monetize it? How will this help me have retirement? How will this pay my bills? All of those hows can so get in the way of our joy and our bliss. Now, am I saying cast responsibility to the wind, cast your fate to the wind, don't worry about your bills? No, I'm not saying that. But here's the real magic. When you let go of the how and you stay connected to what lights you up and what are you feeling, the how seems to work itself out. The money 
finds a way to flow in because you are this bright light of attraction. Many of you, I'm sure, have heard of the law of attraction. Well, basically, law of attraction is this is an abundant universe. There are billions of dollars in this universe. There are billions of wonderful experiences. There are billions of wonderful people. There are, there's no shortage in the universe. The problem is, if we aren't a vibrational match to what we want, it can't be attracted to us. That's just law of attraction. Like attracts like. And if you're not a match to that which you think you want or that which you desire, it, even though it would love to come to you, it's just going to roll right on by you. And that's the frustration. That's what makes people get discouraged and bitter and angry because they keep seeing other people receiving and they're not receiving what they really want to receive. And so what I'm saying to you today, one of the keys to getting what you really want to roll on into your life is stay tuned in to what lights you up, what makes you feel alive, what makes you feel good. Now, disappointments come. Obviously, we can't control the outcome of the world. We can't control what other people do. We can't control the weather. We can't control what the government decides to do. There's so many places we don't have control. But one of the places we do have control is over our responses, over our own lives and the way we respond to what life offers us. So my point is that if you keep your response in alignment with your desire, even if it isn't coming right away, even if you feel sometimes discouraged that it's never going to show up, still stay focused on the dream. Stay focused on that positive feeling. Remember what it feels like when you're lit up and keep giving yourself experiences when you can go back there. Because when you're there, you are a powerful, powerful magnet for attracting what you really want to be experiencing in your life. So even if your partner does something that really is upsetting to you or hurts you, feel the feelings. I'm not saying that. Cry the tears if you need to. Feel the anger. Express it. Beat on pillows. I love that. Get in the car and drive down the road and scream it out. But then be ready to move on and expect something wonderful. Look for the good things that are out there because as I said, it's an abundant universe. There are plenty of good things also lined up to come your way. So you got to stay tuned into that because remember what you focus on, you feed energy to. And what you feed energy to grows. So feed what you want to grow, not what you don't want to grow. Stay focused on the dream, on the desire, on that good feeling that you get when you're doing certain things. Don't worry about how you're going to make a living from it or how you're going to monetize it. Of course, you want that as part of the desire. But remember, first and foremost is the feeling it creates. The feeling within you, the light within you that you feel when you're engaged in that activity. All right, 
that's the first half of what I wanted to pass on to you for how to make 2022 amazing. And as soon as we take a quick break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about something that I feel is equally important. All right, hang with us. We will be right back. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. We're talking about how to make 2022 a rocking year, how to make it the year that your dreams come true, that you receive what you really want in life, not what you're creating by default, by focusing on the negative things. We want to bring in the joy. We want to bring in all the positive stuff that we want. So, one of the things I'd like to talk a little bit about now are New Year's resolutions. Okay, New Year's resolutions are what I like to refer to as pretty much planned disasters. Why? Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. First of all, if I make a resolution that I'm going to, let's say, eat healthier food, what is the implication there? Well, the implication is that I didn't do that last year or I wouldn't be needing to address it this year. So I blew it. I failed in that respect last year. So the minute we go there, let's let's use another example. I'm going to lose 10 pounds this year. And then the implication is what? I gained weight last year, or I didn't take good care of my body last year. So I don't like it as much now. I don't like the way it looks. So remember in the last segment, we were talking about whatever you focus on, you feed energy to. And whatever you feed energy to grows. Well, if I'm focused on my failure from last year, even though I'm trying to do it better, there's still that underlying energy of, I blew it. That underlying energy that's in alignment with lack. I, I wasn't abundantly loving to my body last year. I wasn't abundantly loving to my budget last year. So I've got to change that now. I've got to do it differently. So you see, there's like this built-in negative with a resolution. And, and it unfortunately puts our focus more on failure than on success. So what I'd like to suggest instead of New Year's resolutions is a new year reset. What's cool about reset is it's, it's like a course correction. So if you're sailing along and it's going great and then all of a sudden the wind changes and your sail luffs and your boat isn't moving anymore, you don't slap yourself on the hand and say, Don, you didn't sail that boat nicely. You had you didn't do it right. No, you just change your course. You correct the course so that you're in the flow of the wind. I love that analogy. And actually, I just made that up. Um, but now you're in the flow of the wind instead of fighting against it or going where it doesn't exist. And when we're in the flow, what happens? Everything's easier, right? The boat moves easily. The sail is easy. We get to enjoy what's happening. So a reset or a course correction has a whole different energetic vibration than a resolution. So maybe some examples. Last year, I made a lot of efforts to eat better. 
and I did have a few COVID pounds I wanted to lose. I did pretty well at that. And so, but I think this year I'm going to just change it a little bit and maybe do less carbs. I'm going to correct that course and do less carbs. Let's look at another example. Last year I had a goal to save $10,000 and I didn't quite get there. So how can I correct my course to save more? Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe I don't get cappuccino three or four times a week. Or maybe I save the cappuccino because it gives me such joy and I buy one less pair of shoes or two or maybe three or four, depending on who you are. But do you see what I'm saying? There's no chastisement with this. There's no anger. There's no slapping yourself on the hand. Because we're all doing the best we can with what we know and who we are. I really believe that. So I would love it if this year, instead of making any resolutions, right here, right now, at the beginning of the year, which is usually when we do them. Instead, maybe look at some resets. Maybe look at how you can tweak something and do it a little bit better. Make it a little more effective, a little more gain for you, and not so much downside. Doesn't that feel better? You know, we're all so good at criticizing ourselves. We're all so good at, you know, I uh, wish I hadn't done that or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. The truth is, I remember once hearing a teacher say, everything we do in life has really one reason, and it's to experience a moment of joy, a moment of happiness right? We work to have the money to have a lovely home that makes us happy, or to help our children get through school that makes us happy. You know, we take care of ourselves to look our best, to feel our best, to be healthy, to live fully, to have joy. Everything we do is about creating joy. So on the way to creating joy, I'm just suggesting that we don't beat ourselves up that we didn't get there already. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense, does it? So let's try. Let's try giving ourselves less criticism, more love, more affirmation, more attaboys, so that we can move more easily and more gracefully into joy and happiness. Because after all, what is it we've all been saying to each other for the last few days? Is it, oh, wish you'd have done that differently? Or was it, oh, oh yeah, last year? When? No, what we've all been saying to each other is, Happy New Year. What are we wishing each other? We're wishing each other happiness. And what we know now is that happy comes from self-love, from, from self-care, from appreciation. And let's not forget gratitude. That's huge. So if we incorporate more of all that and less of self-criticism, I'm pretty darn sure that we're all on the way to having a very, very happy new year. All right. See you next week with a great guest on Change It Up Radio. Take care, everyone. Oh, and don't forget, you can hear our show on every major podcast platform, including my favorite, Potopolo. And when you, when you get there, please remember, subscribe, like us, and most of all, share us. 
And that way, we can keep bringing you lots of wonderful information so we can all grow together in this beautiful new year. All right. Take care. See you next week. Bye-bye.